Amen. 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 Don't adjust your, your sets, people. <laughs> Don't do a double take. <laughs> What's the typo? It's the correct character that's up here. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So I, I'm up here this morning because, you know, in part, it's because I'm heated to, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm not used to this. Everybody can sit up. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yes, so back, back, back on track, back on track. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm up here because I'm in part, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to my, my pastor's supper request. What, what's the joke? Subtle as a heart attack. <laughs> um, you know, he spoke about last week. We do have less numbers in the church, and you know, we see in that the ministers have to be doing a little more. So, so I, I volunteered <laughs> myself this morning. <laughs> Hopefully, give you all a word, yes. okay, yes. and hopefully yes. you all can get something from it. Yes, you know, it may have just been for me, yes. <laughs> but that means somebody got something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this morning, um, I'm coming to you all from Exodus, um, chapter three, verses one through five, and it reads. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for this place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Dear God, I'm asking you to Remove the self and use me, dear Lord, Father God, as a vessel to give your word. Yes. I'm praying and asking that anything that you want to be delivered in this message, regardless if I have anything noted down or not, I want you, dear Lord, Father God, yes. to use the spirit to move in me yes. and let the words that need to be said and the message that needs to be given, be given this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So... My topic for you this morning is remove to be moved. And as I read to you from Exodus 3 to 1, oh, okay, all right, Siri so trying to take control of the service now. Okay. <laughs> yes, and as I read to you um, 1 through 5, and the specifically the verse that stood out to me the most and that I'll be coming to you from is verse 5 which is the point where God commands Moses to remove his sandals or his shoes because he was on holy, holy ground. So, you know, when reading this scripture, what came to mind for me was mommy's ordination. You know, when I grew up, I grew up in the Catholic church and I went to Catholic school. And, you know, when you grow up in Catholic church, you don't really know how all that stuff works you know occasionally you see that they elect a pope but it's a bunch of men that go into a room and then they light a flame and they tell you to have a new pope right but you don't really know what's going on back there so this was the first time being at head Kelf was the first time that i actually experienced and witnessed an ordination and being that mommy was being ordained at the time, I was able to see everything that went on behind the scenes and the preparation for 
you know, someone being ordained. You know, mommy was getting all of her stuff together. She was buying the robes, the overlay, the shirt and collar, the hats and all these things. I remember seeing her get all those things together. And what actually stood out to me the most out of all of those things was a little pair of shoes that she bought. Because she bought this little pair of black little slippers. Yes, we, we, we know we got we got the ordination group. <laughs> they remember. <laughs> right? She bought this little pair of black slippers. And you know, it stood out to me because compared to everything else, it was so simple. It looked like a regular pair of slippers that anybody could buy. And it was so simple, it almost seemed out of place. <laughs> so I asked her, you know, mommy, what did you get these shoes for? Mm -hmm. And I remember that she told me essentially that she couldn't wear anything that she had already worn outside. That she was being ordained and essentially the process, the church, everything, it was consecrated. That it, it, she could not wear anything that she had already used. And even though it was the simplest part, it stood out because as a child, and you know, quite frankly, we do this as adults too. We have this idea that if something is quote unquote best, it's because it's fancy <laughs> and it's elaborate and great. You know, we even use the saying, you know, that you put on your Sunday best, yeah, yeah. you know, to imply that you're putting on your nicest clothes, yes. you know? And in this scripture, even when it's talking about angels and, and burning bush, you know, it's the simple part of the removing of the shoes that stood out to me. Mm -hmm. Because I realized the correlation between the scripture and real life. Mm -hmm. You know, in the case of the ordination, because I noticed that in both situations, the shoes that were worn outside had to be removed. Yes. In order to take steps to moving closer to God. Yes. Amen. You know? And it made me realize that although it's a simple gesture, it has to be pretty significant. Yeah. Because why would the removal of somebody's old shoes even have to be noted in the Bible? Mm -hmm. right? right? Why would it have to be mentioned and why would it ha even have to be done? And it, so much so that we continue that practice today, yeah. you know, in cases like the ordination. Yeah. But, you know, the scripture specifically explains that, you know, it's in fact because Moses was about to step onto holy ground, you know, but God's request for Moses to remove his shoes wasn't so much about what Moses' shoes might do to God's holy ground. It was more so about what Moses would have been bringing with him mm. onto God's holy ground. You know, in a physical sense, I'm sure Moses, like most of us, you know, try to avoid stepping directly into certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, we see something gross and nasty on the ground, and you know, we we we, we try we try not to step on it. Right. You know, yes. don't care how we might be out of shape or not doing anything, but we see something gross on the ground, and so we we back we have scotch champions again. <laughs> 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 we go avoid stepping on it, and then go. <laughs> right? You know, but generally, honestly, we don't pay attention to what's going on underneath there, down below the shoe. Most of the time when we check in down there is because we check in to see if we step on something or to make sure that we did not. You know? But the removal of the shoes is significant because it's a physical example of how we are supposed to approach God spiritually. You know, we have to remove all of that we've walked through in the past. All that's gross and nasty and unclean, that's not of God, in order to get closer to Him. Because a lot of times we don't even realize what's there. And we're unaware of what mess is still down there that we actually need to leave behind. You know, God literally said to Moses, don't come hither. He said, don't come any closer. Because he's letting Moses know that coming closer without removing his shoes is not an option. He's letting Moses know that it's just not possible to move forward without first removing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Right. right? In this case, it, it's Moses' shoes. Yeah. Right. But it's also important to know <laughs> that it's the first thing that God asked Moses to do. It's the first thing he tells him. You know, before God began to delve into who he was, that he was this omnipotent, omnipresent God who was witnessing what was happening to his people in, in Egypt and that he was monitoring Moses before he got into explaining, you know, what's going on with this bush? Why is it on fire? <laughs> okay. Before he got into what he was going to instruct Moses to do and to help the people, to help the Israelites that were in Egypt that were suffering. Right. He told him to first remove the sandals. Mm -hmm. The order of it shows that it's a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. It's a requirement that in order to move closer to God, mm -hmm. you first have to remove. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. you know, you have to ask yourself, well, what's the purpose of it? You know, we see in the Bible that the removal of one's shoes is a sign of respect. Okay, it signifies holiness and importance. You know, like in the case later on uh, with Joshua at Jericho, you know, when Joshua was doing intel and he was scoping around the city to see, he was approached by what looked like a man, you know, in, 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 in army fatigue, he had a sword. And Joshua asked, you know, are you friend of all? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's right? And Joshua was told, Right, that there was not an enemy, he was captain of the Lord's army, mm -hmm. and that he's to remove his shoes mm -hmm. because he's on holy ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, you see where the instruction there was given mm -hmm. to first remove, okay, before he was even told who he was speaking with, who he was dealing to dealing with. You know, a lot of times we, we, we wouldn't take heed to instruction so easily from somebody when we don't know that it's authority. Mm -hmm. You know, if we if we show up to a new job and somebody who looked like our co-worker or our kid say, well, you need to do A, B, C, and D. We would look at that person and say, well, who is you? Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's only when the person say, well, I'm the supervisor mm -hmm. that you might say, okay, all right, well, I'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So to show that God is asking this first before he even explains shows that respect mm -hmm. is being commanded. Respect is being dealt out mm -hmm. because you have these men who are removing their shoes before they even find out that this is the person in authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you see that they are understanding that the space is holy. The place is holy and who they're speaking to is, is holy. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. The Bible also shows examples of how the removing of shoes also acknowledge one's rights and ownership. Like in the case of Boaz and his kinsmen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know? But it, it was used in that case because when Boaz approached his family member, right? The family member took off his shoe and handed it to Boaz. Yeah to signify and proclaim mm -hmm. that he understood Boaz's status yeah. and that Boaz had the right to obtain the land that belongs to the family and to marry Ruth. Mm -hmm. Okay? So removing of the shoes in the biblical text shows examples where it clearly defines respect and it establishes respect and it establishes ownership. You know, mm -hmm. and while we should approach God with the highest standards and levels of respect, the truth is God doesn't really need us to remove our shoes or anything for that matter for all of those things to be true with him. Right. He doesn't need us to remove his shoes to signify his holiness. He is that right. He doesn't need us to remove to acknowledge his ownership. Because everywhere we've been and everywhere we're going belongs to God. Amen. 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 And he surely does not need us because we are floor creatures, trust me. Okay? To ensure that something is consecrated, that something is pure, because he is the source and the power that is used to cleanse, to purify, and to consecrate. Yes. So then you have to ask yourself, well, 
Who is it really for? Who is the act of removing really benefiting? Because it makes it, it doesn't change who God is. <laughs> right? Amen. It's benefiting you and I. Yeah. Yeah. It's benefiting the individual. Mm -hmm. Because removing helps you to prepare for what God has in store for you next. Amen. For what's Amen. coming up. Yes. The single act of removing mm -hmm. encompasses multiple actions mm -hmm. and behaviors that are necessary in moving closer to God. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know, for example, removing shoes helps to affirm one's belief in God. Mm -hmm. Because when Moses heeds to God's command and removes his shoes, he's acknowledging where he is. And who he's in the presence of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's acknowledging that it's a fact that he is on holy ground. Mm -hmm. And it's a fact that he is in the presence of God. Lord. Amen. Amen. In showing God the honor yes. and respect yes. and obeying God's command, it's saying, Lord, I believe you. Amen. Lord, Amen. I trust you. Amen. Lord, I will follow you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Amen. It's a simultaneous act of respect yes. and acknowledgement. Yes. 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 Because acknowledging God is real yes is a necessary step in the development yes. of your relationship with god yes. it's the first step you yes, have to believe is. that he is real yes. first yes. in order to start a relationship yes yes, yes. amen yes. 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 the act of removing you know it also helps to establish willingness mm -hmm. because you see god needs to know not only that you acknowledge him mm -hmm. But he needs to know that you are willing to put in the work yeah. and commit to the work yeah. that's being asked of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's not enough to be able. Mm -hmm. God is capable of finding hundreds of people who are able. Mm -hmm. He finds people who knows how to work all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he does it. He does it by seeking people who are already working. Mm -hmm. Because you have you ever noticed how the individuals that are being sought to do God's work in the Bible. They're already in the midst of doing work. For sure. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David was called out from tending to sheep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elijah found Elisha when he was plowing a field. Yeah. Jesus found Simon, Peter, and Andrew when they were fishing. Yes. Yes. And even in the scripture that I read earlier, Moses took his father-in-law's flock out to grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yeah. In all of those cases, these men were working, and they were immediately instructed to leave what it is they were doing mm -hmm. and attend to God's oh, request. Yes. Amen. Before they are even given an explanation of the work that lies ahead of them, right. they are asked to leave. Mm -hmm. Whether it's leave their home, leave their job or profession, yeah. Leave whatever it is they're doing or just leave a pair of shoes. God knows that in agreeing to leave first, it establishes the individual's willingness. That's right. Because it shows that the individual is able to let go of everything. All right. Yes. And let go. Yes. And go with God. Amen. And follow God's commands. Yes. Yes. And do what God asks of them. Yes. Even without them knowing what God's command is going to bring them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Willingness is necessary because it serves our benefit more than it does him. Mm -hmm. God is going to get things done with or without us. Amen. Okay? Amen. But if you are not willing to do something, mm -hmm. it's not going to get done. Amen. Or it's not going to get done right. Yeah. Okay? You, you, you ever have something mm -hmm. to do and you didn't feel like doing it? <laughs> right? You push it back, you procrastinate, you wait till the last minute, you tell yourself, oh gosh, I don't feel like doing this today. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, oh, I'll do it next week. It can wait for next week, you know? Yeah. And even in cases when you do get around to doing it, because you have no choice, right? You don't do it right. You forget to add this ingredient that was needed, right? You leave the house, and when you're halfway there, you say, I forget that thing I was supposed to bring. This is why I leave the house in the first place. <laughs> right? Or you're rushing to do it and you end up doing something you wasn't supposed to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you know, we love to say stuff like, you know, my spirit tell me not to do such and such. <laughs> or my mind tell me not to do so and so. No, that's not it. It's because you went into 
it with a spirit of unwillingness. Yes. Yes. Amen. And once you go in with unwillingness, yes. no progress can be made. No. Amen. 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 That's why God needs you to come to the realization first that you are willing to do it. Right. So that you can move Amen. ahead Amen. with what is planned. Amen. Amen. Because only when God knows that you are willing, then and only then can he unleash what he has in store for you. Amen. That's why the first thing that God asked of Moses was to remove his sandals. Amen. The willingness and the ability to remove and leave things behind is one of the first steps to moving closer to God. Yeah. Yeah. Because once we remove what is asked and you acknowledge God, and establish the willingness to obey him. It puts you in the correct mindset to foster a closer relationship Amen. with him. Amen. You can't start or form a closer relationship with God if you're going into it with the wrong mindset. Most important, a worldly mindset. Because the world will have you thinking that you have to add to make things better. You know, when it comes to things of the world, we are led to believe that more equals better. <laughs> we are led to believe that the more that's added is the closer that a person or thing is to being great or valuable. Mm -hmm. Because that's the perception that's per perpetuated, right? Yeah. But that's not the reality. Because the truth is, in most cases, the more that's added is the further away you become removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give, I'll give you an example of a raffle my job has every year. You know, every year during baseball season, they tend to raffle out two tickets every so often to attend a baseball game in the stadium skybox. You know, it seems like a big deal, right? You know, I never put my name down for it. Don't ask me why. But they, 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 they put it out there. And those tickets cost thousands of dollars for the season. Yep. And the skybox in the stadium is normally filled with food and drinks. Mm -hmm. It have nice seats, yeah. you know, and it they really lead you for, to believe that that is prime and optimal seating. But is it really? <laughs> because truthfully, the people that are sitting up in the skybox, they are further removed from the action than a man sitting down in the cheap seats. <laughs> Okay? They in the skybox eating and drinking and watching this on TV like you are at home. I paid thousands of dollars for these tickets. Okay? And the fact is, is that the people who are in the action that are playing the game, they know that the people that are sitting in the cheap seats, they are more devoted fans. You know why? Because <laughs> they don't have all the fancy little contraptions that the skybox have. Right? They, and they're still there. They're still coming up, okay? And not to mention, because they don't have all those things distracted them, they are able to focus on the game and pay attention to the action that's going down on the field. And, you know, we do this a lot ourselves when it comes to God, especially, you know, when we're in the early stages of our faith. You know, we tell ourselves, you know, I, I, I can't pray out loud. Or I can't pray for somebody because I, I don't know enough about the Bible, right? I don't know. I don't know enough about God's word. Or you know, we'll say, "Oh, I can't. I can't volunteer to do this for the church because I don't have a title. I'm not a minister, you know." Or we'll say, "You know, I would. I would go to church this Sunday, but I don't have any proper clothes. I don't have anything to wear. I don't have no church clothes." And we see even Moses did this to himself, if you read further down in the scripture, where he expresses doubts. You know, he thinks, you know, Pharaoh's not going to listen to me because I don't have no position. I don't have no title. Right? He's not going to see me. Or the Israelites, they're not going to listen to me because I'm not, I'm not one of them. I haven't been worshiping their God like how they have. You know? And the reason why we do these things is because we create these doubts that are based on man's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, we approach things with earthly standards that say that accolades and expenses is what gets you closer, what puts you in a better place, a better starting off point. And it's simply not the truth. 
Because in fact, if you approach God and your relationship with God is jaded with the ideals of the earth, you're not going to be able to move closer. Mm. Looking at things through the eyes of man is actually going to prevent you from seeing God's plan yeah. and what he has in store for you. Yeah. And that's going to prevent you from moving forward. Yeah. That's Man's perspective will have you sowing seeds of doubt and speaking words of negativity. Mm -hmm. It will have you seeing things not as they seem. And seeing things not as man wants you to think they are, but instead as God intended, removes those doubts. Mm -hmm. It removes the negativity that weighs you down. Mm -hmm. And this is why God documented in his word that the act of removing before moving cl closer mm -hmm. is necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to God and his purpose for you. God knows that removing actually has the ability to improve the situation. Right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at your spiritual relationship with God, kind of like a hot air balloon, right? It uses weights and baths to keep itself on the ground. Mm -hmm. And in order to elevate, it must shed those weights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It must remove those baths that's holding it down. Yes. Yeah. That's what we have to do as humans. We must shed in order to elevate. Yes, yeah, right. We must release in order to increase. Okay? Amen. When we load ourselves down with what is perceived to be necessary by earthly standards, when we refuse to let go of the mess of the past, when we are not removing the worldly and proving ourselves to be unwilling, we are preventing ourselves from moving up. Amen. We are preventing ourselves from moving forward and closer to God. Because a lot of times, as humans, you know, we, unlike God, have difficulty realizing that coming into a situation with less can actually prepare us for greater. Mm. You know, I'll give a little anecdote about my mom, it's a story that she told me once or twice, depending on what type of, of trouble I was in, determine how to end the story in. <laughs> but she told me this story about when she was younger. You know, a lot of you know my mom grew up in Trinidad, and when she was in elementary school in those days, you had to go home for lunch. And my mom took it upon herself to take some friends home for lunch. <laughs> Now, at that point, my grandmother was a widow, and she was on a beyond fixed income. It was so fixed, it was broken again. <laughs> okay? My grandmother had no clue where she was going to get the next meal to feed the four children that she already was raising. And here comes little Lita, with more mouths to feed. <laughs> right? This is her overly friendly nature kicking in here. <laughs> right? But, you know, my grandmother, she didn't want to turn the her, my mom and her friends away because, first of all, it's, it's not her friend's fault that my mother did not explain that her house didn't have that much food. <laughs> right? <laughs> and also, it's because my mother, my grandmother rather, was a lot like the mothers that Reverend Biggs Wills described last week. You know? She was a loving and a sacrificing mother and she didn't want to burden her child with the financial troubles that she was experiencing and prevent her child from experiencing different things like bringing a friend home for lunch you know so my grandmother she went into the kitchen and she pulled out whatever it is that she had and she put together a meal and that meal it didn't only fill everybody's belly but my mother told me that for weeks after, the friends who came was telling the friends who wasn't there, oh my gosh, Leeds, they used to call her Leeds, Leeds, your mother is such a good cook. That is the best meal I have ate. Okay, I'm sure we all have some type of variation of that story where the struggle on a make do meal ends up being the sweetest tasting thing, right? And if you haven't gone through that, you know, in direct contrast, you know, you might have a fridge full of food. You just do grocery shopping and your cabinets is full. 
and you still can't figure out what to cook. Or you don't feel like making something, so you order up. You know, these examples show us that sometimes having less allows us to rise to the occasion. Amen. Amen. You know, when we have more than enough or necessary for the moment, sometimes we can get distracted or we can get overwhelmed with all of the options. Instead of focusing on what can be done, what should be done, and what's important. What is important. God knows that by removing the excess, and what's not needed, and most importantly, what's not of him, it allows us to work, not with what we think we need or should have, but with what we actually have, and that is God. Amen. 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 Because, you know, when we remove things, whether it's by choice or by force, you become less distracted and you're able to focus better. Yes, yes. You know, you, you ever try studying for an exam or even you have a thought that you want to get out and jump down before it leave your mind, it's escape your mind. Mm-hmm. You make sure to remove all the distractions. Yes. You know, you lower down the TV or you turn it off for the music. Mm-hmm. You know, you tell the person that's talking, Shh, hold on, hold on, one second, one second. Let me just get this, let me just get this thought out. Mm-hmm. You know? It's true. You remove the distractions so you can focus, mm-hmm. right? Amen. That's what God is doing for us when he's asking us to remove, yeah. right. right? He has given us the ability yeah. to be able to focus, yeah. yes. Amen. Amen. focus on him and what it is that he has planned for us Amen. in our life. Amen. Amen. You know, because yeah. in situations, these real life situations, it, it, it can be more obvious how the removal of things can improve your situation and help yeah. like in the example yeah. that I gave right with the exam you know you remove the distractions you study you pass the test yeah. that's simple right you can see the direct correlation between removing and improvement mm-hmm. right yeah. but there are a lot of situations in life where it's not as obvious and where we're not as likely to be as willing to remove because we think that in doing so, it will make us more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I spoke of the examples before in the Bible of the men who were working, you know, and when Jesus approached Simon Peter and Andrew, the scripture says that straight away they left and followed him. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. In the case of Elijah, and Elisha, when Elijah approached him, Elisha simply said, let me just say goodbye to my parents. You know? Simon Peter and Andrew didn't say, well, you know what? I don't know if I could be fishers of men because I only fish in the sea. <laughs> you know? The, the, Elisha didn't say, you know, I only lived as a farmer and with my family. How am I supposed to go with you, Elijah? How am I supposed to live with you? How am I supposed to follow you? Mm-hmm. You know? Even in the scripture that I read at the beginning, Moses, you know, he, he didn't say it before he took off his shoes, well, you know, what, what if I have something over there that could cut my foot? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what if I step on a split? You know, that's how I wear these shoes on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they all knew, okay, that whether it be their professions, their livelihood, the people around them that was their support system, or even just a pair of shoes that was being worn to protect their feet, that they could remove all of those things because they were all going to be taken care of. Amen, amen, amen. God was going to be the source of all of those things. Amen, amen. Removing doesn't make you more vulnerable. It helps to confirm and solidify your faith. Because when you remove the things that you were depending on for security, right. you are able to put all of your faith and trust in God. You're able to realize that the ultimate source of your needs and desires and that putting your faith and trust in him yes. actually makes your life more secure. Yes, amen. Because when God is in charge of directing your path, All right. he's not just the source of your security, he's the defense against anything that amen. might happen. Amen. 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 Okay. All of 
these traits that are developed through the removing of things are the attributes that are necessary for forming a true and a genuine relationship with God. And that's why God demands it be done first. God knows that we must acknowledge him as the true and living God. We must be willing to do his work and obey him. We must not lose focus and become distracted or become dependent on things of the world. We must remember to keep the faith and that he is the source of all of our blessings. God knows that if these things are not done or established, then you'll not be able to move forward. The scripture says that God said to Moses, do not come closer. But it's not God who is stopping us. It is us who are preventing ourselves from not moving forward. If we refuse to remove the shoes. Just as Moses had had removed his shoes to come closer to God, we have to remove our shoes, whatever they may be. That's preventing us from taking the steps moving closer to God. You have to remove the shoes of bad relationships. You have to remove the shoes of dependency. You have to remove the shoes of idolization. You have to remove the shoes of worldly distraction. Okay? And allow yourself to move closer to God. So this morning, I implore you all today to remove whatever it is that is no longer needed in your life. And in doing so, you can move closer to God. Thank you.